Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today's February 7th, 2023, and let's get to the news happening in Ukraine and the world, shall we? Before I begin, I just wanted to let you know that I will be away for the next week. I'm going to take a little break, so there will be no video updates for me in the next couple of days, but rest assured I am coming back and I will be making more content for you guys. So that's that, and let's first hit the map update. And the hottest point is yet again Bakhmut, so I wanted to overview Bakhmut and the situation. Uh, around that city. So right now it's very difficult for the Ukrainian forces. It's becoming exceedingly pressurized from the Russian side. They're really trying to push more and more. And as you can see, they have taken control, partial control over the north of Bakhmut in the main junction here of the highway that feeds in the north of Bakhmut. They have partial control over it. So now the Ukrainian force can no longer use this road to resupply its forces from the north. And as I've said previously, the most important highway here uh, is the T0504. This is the lifeline for the Ukrainian forces. This is where they push all their supplies. They resupply its, uh, their forces in Bakhmut. And if the Ukrainian forces lose control over this highway, it's going to be serious a serious discussion. And I think... The Ukrainian staff, general staff, will need to consider a retreat from Bakhmut. I don't think it's worth holding Bakhmut anymore. The Ukrainian forces have done more than enough to hold the Russians. But if they lose control of this highway, it's going to be time to retreat, most likely through uh, Hramove into Chasivyar and go back into more defensible positions. And um, some people say that, you know, the major Russian offensive is imminent. I think it's already started. Since yesterday, there's been over a thousand dead Russian soldiers, which is these numbers have been seen, I think, since the beginning of the conflict. So the Russians have already started their major offensive. And um, that's the situation right now. Looking at the global uh, overview of the map, and let me take a look here. You can see that, first of all, the Russians are have increased their uh, presence in Kremina. There's more and more troops um, running Kremina, and they're trying to really push towards Liman. So this is the first front that they've opened. They're trying to take back all the lost territory in the last few weeks from Ukraine. The second front is obviously Bakhmut. That's been ongoing for the last few months. And so the main goal on this northern front is to go towards Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. So one group uh, is assigned to go towards Slavyansk by going through Liman and the other one to go towards Kramatorsk. The other front that they've opened is, is in the south. Uh, and that's also been ongoing here in Donetsk for the last few years, since 2014, obviously. Uh, so there's the Donetsk front, where they're having negligible gains. And they also have the catastrophic Vuhledar front, where they've gotten, you know, hundreds of uh, troop losses per day here. It's been ca a catastrophic disaster for the Russians here um, with evidence, with video evidence to showcase for it. So that's what the Russians are trying to do. They're trying to put pressure in the south by going towards Kurachove here. And then in the north, really applying pressure to go towards the two biggest Ukraine, Ukraine held cities in Donbass, Slovyansk and Kramatorsk. But will they be successful? I don't think so. If they weren't successful in 2022, where they had the element of surprise, much better uh, trained uh, soldiers, they had an overwhelming advantage in equipment and artillery, I can't see them being successful this time. This is a Hail Mary from the Russian side. And will they be able to do damage? For sure. There's no doubt about it. They also will be able to probably grab some territory. But I can't see them being completely successful by the end of March 2023 in grabbing the entirety of Donbass here. It's just not going to be uh, possible, in my opinion. So that's the situation in the map, on the map. Now, let's get to the uh, slides. And this news is coming out from Germany. So Germany has approved the export of 178 Leopard 1s. 
um, that they're going to be pulling out from their industrial stocks. Most likely, this is going to be the, the modern iteration of the Leopard 1, which is the 1A5. And the unfortunate thing is, yeah, it's great that Ukraine is going to be getting 178 tanks, close to 200. But as you can see here at the bottom, the first tanks are to be delivered to Ukraine in the summer, but most of them will not be delivered until next year, which might be too late. So let's hope that the grand majority of these tanks will be able to be, um, they'll be able to deliver these tanks by the end of the summer, or at least in the early phase of the summer, because this is when Ukraine is going to need them the most for their major counteroffensive. And uh, by next year, it might be too late, right? So we're talking about February 2024. I think that it is crucial that Ukraine ends this war by the end of this year, or at the very latest, like early in 2024, um, to really exhaust Russia and demilitarize Russia as much as possible. But if we're talking about winter next year, it might be too late. This is interesting because this is a recommendation that I got uh, on my Twitter tw Twitter, Twitter feed, sorry. Um, and this is, uh, his name is Maxim Mironov, and he identifies himself as a Russian liberal who supports Ukraine. But he had a very interesting tweet, and this is why I've always been very wary, and I don't really trust these Russian liberals that came out recently, right, since the war started. And in this tweet, he kind of displays the typical mindset of a you know, pro-Ukrainian Russian or a Russian liberal. And here he writes, By the way, anybody can explain to me why I, Maxim Mironov, have more responsibility at deposing Putin with my bare hands than any other citizen from Europe or planet Earth? Question mark. And to me, why I don't trust them is exactly because of these types of statements. Until these Russian liberals start doing way more than the Ukrainians at stopping this war, at stopping the Russian regime, and they stop whining about the fact that, oh, well, why us? You know, why are we being, being blamed? It's not us. Uh, you know, the whole world needs to take responsibility. No, it's the Russian people. They cannot be trusted until they start doing way more than the Ukrainian people to ensure Ukrainian victory. They, to me, are people that cannot be trusted. Where was this guy when, you know, prior to 2022, um, you know, in 2014, when Russia illegally annexed Crimea? Where was this guy when Russia started uh, their proxy war in Donbass, when they shut down the MH17 plane, right? They only came out recently, all these pro, you know, Ukraine liberals from Russia. They're not trying to claim that we're on the right side. No, look at us. There's good Russian people. We need to be very, very careful with them. And I personally don't really, I don't want to associate myself right now with any Russian, whether he be a pro Ukraine Russian or, you know, a Putinist, it doesn't matter. I am very, very careful with them now because uh, they're, they've been good at manipulating so far. So uh, be careful with that, guys. And last news, it's more on an international level, but I thought it was very important to cover it. Uh, it's an unfortunate disaster um, in Turkey and Syria. A ma uh, earthquake of, mag of 7.8 magnitude hit them yesterday uh, in the south of Turkey, which you know so far has claimed over 5,000 lives and thousands of others were injured. Uh, unfortunately, the numbers will only go higher. Um, so I wanted to send my prayers to the people of Turkey and also in Syria. Uh, it's a insane and devastating disaster. Um, and it just tells you, shows you the power of nature. Um, but send your prayers and thoughts. If you can help the people out there by giving donations, that's also really important. Um, but uh, I thought that was also important to cover. So that's it, guys. This is the update for February 7th. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. I am trying to pull out as many videos as possible. I will not be present for the next week, but rest assured I'm coming back. Like my video. Let me know what you think about my previous statement about this Maxim Mironov, what you think about it, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.